whoops, I forgot to turn this on. So while it's firing up, shall we say, <laughs> here's something that y'all get, my listeners. Whoops, let's turn the lights on for you. Y'all my special squirrels. Cause you like to listen to me go on even when I'm half asleep. Or maybe you don't like to, but you do it. You get to see my hand dyed blanks first. I know they look a mess now. But once I cake them up, I love the pink and the just the pink and the yellow. Really kind of like those. So I did two. Just pink and yellow. God, what can I call it? Granny D's. I was thinking of... These are crazy. This is kind of like the Granny D Wild. It sort of has all the colors in it. I was sort of thinking of a sunset with this and maybe a sunrise with this. So how about... And this will all go in one project together, so I'll have to alternate, you know. Uh, and they're still a little bit damp. I had a time yesterday. Put these out. Well, I waited around a while because it was so cloudy. And then when I thought it was safe, I put them back out. Or I put them out. And then I, of course, went to sleep while I was trying to either crochet or knit. And when I woke up, it was raining cats and dogs. So I went flying out there, got wet as could be. My yarn got wet as could be. These. Anyway, it's been a time. So they're still a little bit damp. I had to, I just brought them in here and laid them all around. Right now they're on top of lamps and such. The necks of lamps. But I was thinking of, you know, I'm trying to do, you know, Granny's Flower Garden, Granny's Apron. And these are not for sale. I, shoot, I can hardly get them done for just me. Oh, that's my... All the messages coming up when I turn my <laughs> candle on. Shh, be quiet. Um, <laughs> all the Instagrams and this, that, and the other. But I just name them Granny Night. I would love to be able to, I don't know, I, I'm too, y'all know, I'm too squirrely. I got too many whips and stuff to have another side hustle, or have a side hustle. So right now, they're just for me, and maybe, you know, giveaways. I think, pretty sure this is going to be the one that will be in my fairy giveaway, along with the bag. And I talked to Karen, and she is sending the bag that she wants me to do on my drawing on the 15th. So, yay. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, and this one, too, that I dyed the other day. Right now, I've got, in the soaking bucket, three of the cottons that I got. The gray, light gray cottons that I got from uh, the Dollar Tree. And the regular writ dye says it's for cotton, too. So I put salt in the water and vinegar because I remember Rebecca doing that. But anyway, back to the yarn. And y'all are here for a book, book reading. That's going to happen. And I hope I don't read myself to sleep. Um, anywho, the name. I was just kind of thinking... Uh, of the sunrise sunset thing i was thinking uh, this is a really long name though sunrise and sunset rocking daisy jane what sunrise and sunset rocking daisy jane on granny's porch <laughs> maybe i'll have to do a anonym or something anyway it's crazy that's just kind of what I was thinking. That's stupid, isn't it? That's crazy. Anyway, it might just be Granny, Sunrise, and Sunset. 
Little Daisy June is just fine. She sleeps just as much as I do. <laughs> Have a baby that sleeps as much as I do. How great. Hadn't had to change her diaper not once. <laughs> Another great thing. And I do have the grand kitty. I have to change his litter box away <laughs> and feed and water him. But he's been great. He hadn't. He jumped up on my lap last night for a little while, and that's about it. And he's been here since Tuesday. Yeah. Okay, let's get the reading, shall we? <laughs> We're in chapter whatever 20 part two you'll know by the title when priscilla had gone to the parlor and before ann could escape upstairs diana walked into the kitchen ann caught her astonished friend by the arm diana berry who do you suppose is in that parlor at this very moment mrs charlotte e morgan and a new york millionaire's wife and here i am like this and not a thing in the house for dinner but a cold ham bone diana by this time, Anne had become aware that Diana was staring at her in precisely the same bewildered fashion as Priscilla had done. It was really too much. Oh, Diana, don't look at me so, she implored. You at least must know that the neatest person in the world couldn't empty feathers from one tick into another and remain neat in the process. It, it, it isn't the feathers, hesitated Diana. It is, it's your nose, Anne. My nose? Oh, Diana, surely nothing has gone wrong with it. You know, she prides herself on her nose. This is her one good feature. Anne rushed to the little looking glass over the sink. One glance revealed the fatal truth. Her nose was scarlet, brilliantly scarlet. Anne sat down on the sofa, her dauntless spirit subdued at last. What's the matter with it? asked Diana, curiously overcome delicacy. I thought I was rubbing my freckle lotion on it, but I must have used that red dye Marilla has for marking the pattern on her rugs. It was a despairing response. What shall I do? <laughs> wash it off, said Diana practically. Perhaps it won't wash off. First I dye my hair, then I dye my nose. <laughs> Marilla cut my hair off when I dyed it, but that remedy would hardly be practical in this case. Well, this is another punishment for vanity, and I suppose I deserve it. Though there's not much comfort in that. It is really almost enough to make one believe in ill luck. Though Mrs. Lynn says there's no such thing, because everything is foreordained. Fortunately, the dye washed off easily, and Anne, somewhat consoled, betook herself to the east gable, while Diana ran home. Presently, Anne came down again clothed and in her right mind, the muslin dress she had finally hoped to wear was bobbing merrily about on the line outside, so she was forced to contend herself with her black lawn. The heck is that? She had the fire on and the tea steeping when Diana returned. The latter wore her muslin, at least, and carried a covered platter in her hand. Mother sent you this, she said, lifting the cover and displaying a nicely carved and jointed chicken to Anne's grateful eyes. The chicken was supplemented by light new bread, excellent butter and cheese, Marilla's first fruit cake, and a dish of preserved plums floating in their golden syrup as in congealed summer sunshine. There was a big bowl full of pink and white asters also by way of decoration, yet the spread seemed very meager meager beside the elaborate one formerly prepared by mrs morgan Anne's hungry guest however did not seem to think about anything was lacking and they ate the simple viands viands vittles <laughs> v-i-a-n-d-s with apparent enjoyment after the first few moments Anne thought no more of what was or what was not on her bill of fare Mrs. Morgan's appearance might be somewhat disappointing, as even her loyal worshippers had been forced to admit to each other, but she proved to be a delightful conversationalist. She had traveled extensively and was an excellent storyteller. She had seen much of men and women and crystallized her experiences into witty little sentences and epigrams which made her hearers feel as if they were listening to one of the people in the clever books. 
But in, under all the sparkle, there was a strongly felt undercurrent of true womanly sympathy and kind-heartedness which won affection as easily as her brilliancy won admiration. Nor did she monopolize the conversation. She could draw others out as skillfully and fully as she could talk herself. And Anne and Diana found themselves chatting freely to her. Mrs. Pendexter said little. She merely smiled with her lovely eyes and lips and ate chicken and fruit cake with preserves and with such exquisite grace that she conveyed the impression of dining on ambrosia and honeydew. But then, as Anne said to Diana later on, anybody so divinely beautiful as Mrs. Pendexter didn't need to talk. It was enough for her to ju for her just to look. After dinner, they all had a walk through Lover's Lane and Violet Vale and the Birch Path and back through the Haunted Wood to the Dryad's Bubble, where they sat down and talked for a delightful last half hour. Mrs. Morgan wanted to know how the Haunted Wood came by its name, and they laughed until she cried when she heard the story and Anne's dramatic account of a certain memorable walk through it at the witching hour of twilight. It was in it has indeed been a feast of reason and flow of soul, hasn't it? said Anne, when her guest had gone and she and Diana were alone again. I don't know which I enjoyed more, listening to Mrs. Morgan or gazing at Mrs. Pendexter. I believe we had a nicer time than if we had known they were coming and had been cumbered with much serving. You must stay to tea with me, Diana, and we'll talk it over. Priscilla says Mrs. Print Pendexter's husband's sister is married to an English earl, and yet she took a second helping of the plum preserve, said Diana, as if the two, ha two facts were somehow incompatible. I dare say even the English earl himself wouldn't have turned up his ar aristocratic nose at Marilla's plum preserves, said Anne proudly. Anne did not mention the misfortune which had befallen her nose when she related the day's history to Marilla that evening. But she took the bottle of freckle lotion and emptied it out the window. I shall never try any beautifying messes again, she said darkly resolute. They may do for careful, deliberate people, but for anyone so hopelessly given over to making mistakes as I seem to be, it's tempting fate to meddle with them. And that's all a chapter 20. It only took me 12 minutes. Well, almost 13. Well, I was talking a lot of that time. Let's see how chapter 21 is looking, shall we? They all seem to be so lengthy lately. Oh, yeah. I'll have to start it tomorrow. I'll for sure go to sleep trying to read this. And two. Yep, it won't be long. Till Krista from the Secret Yarnery will be coming on. I do love that woman. I just love her. I love her. But I love looking at her house. Her yarnery is gorgeous. And you know she's taking her taking us all around so that's been cool as well okay folks have a happy friday and i'm so glad to tell you that i will be live at five today and i have got to get my 2k giveaway video up yep 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 got the big bag i've started putting little goodies in uh, I gotta get the yarn in, and, uh, anyway, that drawing will be first. It will be, like, sometime between payday and the end of the month. I wasn't gonna have it first, because I'll, I'll be having three giveaways in one payday, but the Lord will provide. <laughs> Love to you all. See you shortly. You know, it'll be a while, but it'll go by fast. Be sweet. Don't be ugly. And later I'll have these to show again, because I'll be showing everybody, you know, these. Uh, 
They may even be dry by that time and caked up. I, I so want to see how they look caked up. And right now, did I tell you I've got cotton? I think I did. I've got cotton and vinegar salt water to try to dye brown. I think I'll do brown and purple. It's using the RIT dye. Regular RIT dye. It says right on the bottle. Cotton. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. <laughs> yammer, yammer, yammer on. Love y'all. Bye.